Good evening all, welcome to this new session. We will try to see some interesting neuroradiology spotters or cases set to. So this was a case of trauma. So here you can see clearly see there is a lucent zone noted in the anterior half of the skull underlying underneath the frontal bones and also you can see there is a suspicious fracture in the frontal bone. So we have taken the CT scan. So typically in this actual CT scan it has atrial axial sections clearly you can see there is free air which is causing compression of the frontal lobes and also causing separation of the frontal lobes from the calvaria and also this free air is extending along the fox and which is causing compression of the frontal lobes which this is nothing but a classical case of tension nemocephalus and this uh, tension nemocephalus typically mimics a Mount Fuji sign this is the Mount Fuji sign in Japan. So I have shown this case because it's very rare for us to see a nemocephalus or tension nemocephalus especially in the plain, plain radiograph or in the topogram of the skull. So this was a tension nemocephalus diagnosed on the topogram of the skull and these are the corresponding actual images to showing typical tension nemocephalus which is classically mimics the Mount Fuji sign. Next, uh, this is the other case where you can see uh, this is the ectopic post pituitary. Here also you can see there is an ectopic post pituitary, and there is complete absence of the infundibulum or infundibular stack. Here you can see the infundibular stack is absent, and also you can see the anterior pituitary is also hypoplastic. So whenever you see this classical triad, definitely suspect pituitary stack interruption syndrome. So this pituitary stack interruption syndrome is characterized by absent or hypoplastic anterior pituitary gland thin or absent infundibulum and ectopic posterior location. So because of absence of the anterior hormones and growth hormones definitely this patient mostly presents with in the first decade with growth retardation due to deficiency of growth hormones and the combination of hyperprolactinemia and hypothyroidism is known as Pickard syndrome. So remember pituitary stack interruption syndrome and Pickard syndrome. Next case, this is other case where you can see this uh, patient presented with headache. So there is a linear serpiginous vascular like structure noted in the right uh, ambient cistern which is showing blooming on GRE. So and this patient was presented with headache and vomitings. So this is a classical location of basal vein of Rosenthal. So this is the basal vein of Rosenthal thrombosis. Uh, what is this basal vein of Rosenthal which is nothing but deep paired deep cerebral veins formed by the union of anti-cerebral vein, deep middle cerebral vein and inferior striate veins. This each vein pa passes lateral to the midbrain. Here you can see this passes lateral to the midbrain. Here also you can see it passes uh, lateral to the midbrain and this is the basal vein of Rosenthal which drains into the vein of Guylen. Here also you can see this is the basal vein of Rosenthal along with the internal cerebral vein it drains into the vein of Guylen. So this uh, each vein passes lateral to the midbrain through the ambient systems. They are closely related to the posterior cerebral arteries and the trochlear nerves in the ambient system. The drainage typically territories include mesial temporal lobes uh, and even adjacent parahippocampal gyrus and uncus. Common etiological factors can be pregnancy, oral contraceptives, protein C and protein S deficiency or alterations, malignancy, dehydration and malnutrition. So whenever you see a uh, linear serpiginous vein like structure with, with blooming on GRE in the ambient cistern adjacent to the midbrain definitely suspect deep cerebral vein thrombosis or basal vein of Rosenthal thrombosis. Uh, next this is other case where you can see typically there are alternative areas of uh, hyper intense and hypo intense areas which uh, typically mimics a uh, bullseye or onion bulb type of appearance with adjacent perlesian edema in the frontal lobes and also in the peritoxpital lobes which is showing peripheral uh, even ring like enhancement. So this is a classical case of Barlow's concentric sclerosis. So what is Barlow's concentric sclerosis? It is a rare and severe monophasic demyelinating disease considered as a subtype of multiple sclerosis. It's a variant of multiple sclerosis where alternative bands of here you can see these are the alternative bands of nothing but uh, demyelinating and myelinating white, white matter is seen which typically mimics the bullseye nothing but and also onion onion bulb appearance. So what are the differential diagnosis? Marburg variant of MS, tumefactory demyelination, ADEM, lymphoma, abscess and toxoplasmos are the differential diagnosis. So here you can see the also this is also showing concentric target type of appearance. So this is a concentric target type of appearance with adjacent perlesian edema in case of neurotoxoplasmosis and this is eccentric target type of appearance also shown in, seen in neurotoxoplasmosis. So remember uh, uh, nothing but onion bulb appearance in Barlow's concentric sclerosis. The close differentiation is neurotoxoplasmosis where you can see the concentric target and eccentric target sign which helps in differentiating neurotoxoplasmosis from Barlow's concentric sclerosis. Next here also this is other classical case where you can see there is hyper intensity over the surface of the midbrain typically in the pons. 
here also you can see on the flare typically hyper intensity on the surface of the pons this is a classical case of bloomy rind sign this i have taken from the journal this is the journal and the uh, from which i have taken so what is bloomy rind sign bloomy rind sign nothing but is seen in leptomeningeal keratomatosis or metastasis so this uh, typical t2 flare hyper intensity on the brain stem surface typically mimics the uh, nothing but uh, sugar coating appearance on the cheese so that's why it is called as bloomy rind sign which may show high on dwa with low on ad see and some path pathogenesis can be due to either cytotoxic edema or tumor infiltration over the pons most commonly it is seen in leptomeningeal metastasis from lung adenocarcinoma most commonly with egfr mutations so remember bloomerian sign in leptomeningeal keratomatosis or metastasis next this is the last case where you can see uh, there is a extraaxial iso2 hyperintense lesion noted in the noted against the right frontotemporal lobe convexities with that's a significant per lesion edema and mass effect which is showing intense homogeneous enhancement and also you can see there is a uh, hyperintense uh, hyperintense area noted in the cerebellum which is showing multiple altered abnormal foliar patterns which are uh, uh, appearing as a lamellated appearance or tigroid type of appearance and also it's showing blooming on gre and there is no significant enhancement on ivy contrast so this is a classical case of meningioma associated with lermetida close disease we have seen lots of case of meningioma but meningioma associated with lermetida close disease is somewhat rare occurrence so that's why i have shown this case So thank you all